This morning's Breakfast Bible Bite is Part 8, Extrapolating Guidelines for Christian Living from Moses' Encounter with God After Asking God to Send Someone Else. Let's continue with the narrative from Moses' Encounter with Pharaoh and see if any other human traits become visible. If you've been following this series, then you know that God still required Moses to go before Pharaoh, despite Moses' reluctance. And you know that Pharaoh wouldn't listen to God's ambassadors who were speaking on behalf of God for those who were unable to appeal to Pharaoh themselves. So God began to emphasize his demands through a decree of plagues that directly confronted the idols of Egypt and thereby discrediting the validity of their worship. Through his confrontation with these plagues, God displayed his authority over all creation. He can either bless humankind through nature or use nature as a destructive entity. You may have questioned whether the plagues that have recently hit America and the Caribbean islands uh, today are simply freaks of nature, or is God using nature as a tool of awakening? bringing our nation and these tropical paradises to a place that they will recognize and submit to his absolute power and authority. When God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel from bondage in Egypt, the display of God's authority served at least two distinct purposes. The first, to show the Israelites whose faith had weakened by their years of indenture, coupled with God's seeming procrastination about their deliverance from Egyptian oppression. Although historically today we can look back and see that God was very busy nation building. The time of their prophecy, prophesied delivery was now at hand and Elohim was building their faith so that the sons of Israel would know that the God of their fathers was alive and worthy of their worship. The second purpose was to show the Egyptians that their gods were powerless and insignificant. When God sends us out as ambassadors of his love, his calling also serves two distinct purposes in us. The first is to make us personally aware of our dependence on his indwelling spirit, thus building our own faith. And the second is to give us an opportunity to fulfill his command that is found in Luke 12, 18, or 12, 8. I tell you the truth, everyone who acknowledges me publicly here on earth the Son of Man will acknowledge in the presence of God's angels. 